everything that you've been through and you're moving on. What, what are your, your thoughts right now? Um, just happy we pulled it out. You know, um, it's going to sound crazy, but it was all about the night. Everything else was in the past. Uh, couldn't dwell on all that different type of stuff. And uh, not to uh, diminish how serious everything's been the past uh, week or so. Uh, you know, it was all about basketball tonight. Bruce, with that being said, I would like to know if you could talk about what this team showed overcoming a week unlike any team has ever overcome in sports as far as we're, we're aware to come back and win this series. And do you think you, you have shown the country or sent a, a message or lesson or shown a, gotten a lesson for the country? Um, no. Uh, I think I said this once before. Uh, I'm not that deep or philosophical, you know, at the end of the day. For us, it was basketball. You know, had we lost this game, it wasn't like they were going to let us go to the next round because of what we've been through. You know, I think it just showed uh, our will, our fight, and more so than, than getting through that, it was about getting through tonight. You know, the first half, uh, we gave up 64 points, I think, in the first half. We just showed a lot of a lot of fight and a lot of will to come back and win this. I asked the last question, too, but you said that. Too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Hey, Chris. Um, what did you guys learn from not only this game but this series that would help you in the next round against Oklahoma City? Um, I mean, I think one of the things that we learned is that the, the series isn't won or lost in the first game. You know, we lost game one here at home. You know, we knew we had to go there and get one, and we did that. And we just showed a, showed a lot of fight. It's ups and downs um, throughout the entire series. But this was a slugfest, man. It was a, it was a dog fight. It's a good team we beat over there. Steph was uh, amazing all series long, and it just feels good to to, to get that one under our belt. Hey, Chris, can we get to Doc as to handle this in the way that he, he finally like well, let go at the end? It seemed like he was yeah. pumping his fist. Well, what did that mean to you when you saw that? I, I didn't know, to tell you the truth, until uh, I was about to get in the shower and I asked our team doctor. It was on the TV and I seen Doc and I was like, wow, Doc was cheering, huh? And uh, you just don't see that from him too much. And uh, myself, I'm, I'm sort of like that too. And, I sort of let go there when it was two seconds on the clock and I knew we needed one free throw because uh, it's been emotional. It's been emotional and our team, whether you can see it or not, is very tight. And you know, we got like a team group text where it's just our entire team. And it's pretty funny at times too, but last night guys were texting like, no, this, this can't be over. It's not time for this to be over. And you just felt it in the timeouts at halftime. We just knew it wasn't time for our season to be over. Chris, over here. Let's say. Do you guys have enough in the tank after this series? I mean, you start up on Monday very quickly. Where are you guys physically and emotionally? Are you ready to start this next We got season? the best training staff in the league. I believe that. I'm not just saying it. Uh, Jason Powell and all the other guys, we got the best training staff in the league. So, uh, you know, we'll fly to Oklahoma tomorrow. Maybe Blake will have us at his house for dinner or something like that. <laughs> and we'll be ready to play on Monday. Chris. What was the scene like in the locker room afterwards, and what did Doc say to you guys? Um, there's a bunch of cameras in there, first of all, which that never happens. But, uh, you know, he just said, good win. You know, good win, way to fight, way to, way to uh, trust. That's the biggest thing with our team right now is trust. And, you know, obviously we go back and forth at times where it doesn't seem like we do, but Doc tells us all the time, if we trust, we'll find a way to win. And that's what we did. Chris. Chris, what did the last two weeks say about your team? What did it tell you? Did it tell you anything you didn't know, or what does it say about your team in the last two weeks? I don't know. I'm gonna tell you the truth. Like this is, I, like, I don't even remember half the stuff that's happened in the past week. <laughs> you know, it's, I don't know. I, it's just all about right now. All I can think about right now is getting home and, you know, talking to my family about this game right here. I, I don't really remember the past couple weeks except for it's been exhausting. It's been exhausting. Now it's on to the next round. Chris, if Chris, is there uh, over here? Is there any correlation between what you went through off the court? You kind of related to the trust that you talked about. Is there any correlation between what you guys have dealt with off the court in the last week and how you figure out things, especially tonight? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I we said a few times, maybe maybe not so much in game. What was that? 
four that we lost there. You know, but all in all, when they throw the ball up, it's been basketball. You know, all the stuff before the game or after the game, all the questions, it is what it is. But once they throw the ball up, it, it's been basketball every game. So, Chris, I know you delegated a lot of stuff to Kevin Johnson during the week, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you're still being called and asked upon. You know, could you describe the, the extra duties I guess you had to deal with as the president of the Players Union? Um, yeah, it was tough that first day, but uh, I got rid of my phone. <laughs> I did. I seriously, I got rid of my phone for the rest of the playoffs. And, um, it's been quite relaxing, to tell you the truth. You know, uh, you know, my wife, my parents, my brother. You know, other than them and my teammates, they. You know, I don't need to talk to nobody else right about now. Chris, two questions for you. What did you say in the group text last night, and what did you tell the team at halftime? You know, I didn't say anything last night. I just read it. You know, I was sitting there uh, watching games, watching that Portland game, that unbelievable shot Damian Lillard hit. And, uh, you know, me and uh, Jamal Crawford actually just text back and forth, just talked about the energy that we need to come out with. And um, like I said, it, it's been emotional, but it's over now. Now we got to focus on, uh, on OKC. You talked about uh, practice yesterday. Doc said he cut it short because the energy wasn't there. Was it just a culmination of a long week, or what, what do you think it was? It? Man, I don't know. I don't even remember practice yesterday. <laughs> I'm serious, man. It's, it's just been all about tonight. Ever since we lost game six, everything has been about rest, uh, uh, defending. Uh, me and Blake, you know, this is our third year together now, so we've been through a lot. So we talked about it before the game. If we go down, we're going to go down swinging, and that's what we try to do. And, and how are you physically going to have Russell? Up next, trying to Man, just got done with Steph and then go right <laughs> on the rush, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll say a special prayer for me tonight. <laughs> Chris, sometimes, you know, when you roll out of one series right into the next one, that can be a good thing. No time, no downtime to sit and think about it and worry about it. Yeah, you can be in a nice rhythm or something, right? Yeah. Hope you're right. <laughs> All right, Blake Griffin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Blake, did you go, what happened at the beginning of that? third quarter. Obviously, you guys went into halftime. Things didn't seem to be clicking. Uh, they seemed like they were controlling the pace. And then suddenly, everything flipped. Um, you know, I thought we just did a good job on defense. And we started getting stops. Uh, we started making the rotations that we wanted to. And, you know, all season long, whenever we get stops, it leads to, uh, leads to easy buckets. And then once we get some easy buckets, then the more shots start to fall. So, um, you know, it's all about defense. Wait, was there? Yeah, that was a t t close game down the stretch. Was there one moment that you can say the game shifted in your favor? One incident, one anything? Oh man, uh, honestly, I, I honestly can't remember all of it. I mean, there was a bunch of you know moments. There was a bunch of big shots. There was times where you know maybe it was a block, maybe it was a, a stop defensively or a shot. There was a lot of different things. I can't, I couldn't really say. But Team just as far as coming together, where did that? When did the team? Was it before the game ever started? Or when did the team recognize you know what it was going to take to win? Um, I mean, I, I think we know, we knew, and we know, but you know we came out kind of lackadaisical in, in that first half and, and put ourselves in a, in a bad hole. Um, I mean, but to their credit, I mean they shot seventy percent from three, and whatever from the, from the field, so. They, they, they played really well, but I thought we just came out and we just we just dug in and we believed. I mean, uh, at, at halftime in the locker room, you would have thought that you know, we were up by a little bit just because no one was really down, down on ourselves. We just kind of kept pushing and kept fighting. Blake, when you look back on this series 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what do you, what do you think you're going to remember about this these last two weeks? <laughs> um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great series. I mean, this is my second game seven three playoff series um, and you know, I still remember a lot about the first one um, but this one you know much different in, in a different type of, of series as far you know we was just so high high pace you know high high offensive um, output and, and all that I mean this game you know everybody was like ready to grind it out in the locker room after the game but we didn't really grind it out we just outshot pretty much um, but I mean, it's it's, it's going to be a memorable, memorable series but honestly I can't tell you
it good for you guys to be able to hit the kind of mental reset button though and, and start a new series? And is that going to help you kind of put the emotional stuff that went with this series behind you? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, you know, it's kind of all in the past. We, we, we had that baggage with us for that series, but I mean, now it's, it's, it's pretty much over. I mean, you know, it's obviously still lingered, but it's not, not quite the same. So, you know, hopefully, um, we just get locked in tomorrow and do what we got to do and, and uh, have a good showing. If, like, the way Doc just kind of, like, let his emotions out at the end of the game, he was, like, pumping his fist and high-fiving everyone, did you see that, and what did that mean to you and the team? It meant a lot because I think he, of all people, uh, has been through probably the most. I mean, just because he he really had to deal with it, you know, his first couple of days, and we weren't really, we as a team, we decided not to really speak on it. He was the guy that everybody was kind of looking to, and, and um, you know, he's the he's the leader of our team, and, and um, emotionally, I, I can't imagine what he was going through. Um, so, you know, you could tell that, that he really he really had a sense of relief once this was over. You know, that we kind of got through uh, a, a physically tough and mentally tough series. Blake, uh, Chris uh, earlier described this series as almost like a slugfest. Uh, what are some of the things that you all? Taken from this series that will age you against Oklahoma City. Um, you know they score the ball so well, and they have so many guys who can shoot the ball um, that, that you know we really had to to be aware of where guys were at all times. You know the rotations; I mean, they're, they're swinging it from you know Steph to to Clay to you know, somebody else that can shoot. And, you know they, they just space the floor, and they, they they run their offense well. They know what makes them successful, and, and they did a good job of that all series. You know, with the exception of a couple of games, I think. So, you know, I, I think defensively, um, it prepared us to, to really um, be in our rotations and, and understand that nothing's going to be perfect, but we just got to kind of work it out. Like all, all season, you guys have been emphasizing the importance of trust with the with this team and scoring shoot around. You guys reiterated that in the game on turnouts. I mean, how much did that trust help you guys fight through and fight back tonight and, and through this series? Uh, it was huge. I think. Um, you know, I think game two it was big for us. Um, I know I said after the game that it was, it was crazy. The, the mood before the game of game two was so much different than before game one. And game two, we were already down 0-1 at home and, and, and lost at home court. And, um, I think it just kind of made us realize that you know, we don't need to panic. We don't need to fight too. I think we just wanted it too much in a lot of games. And, and um, I mean, you can't play like that because you start doing too much. And, and I, I was, I was. Uh, Times tonight where we just really trusted him. It was a beautiful thing. Ben, like you talk about uh, being an Oklahoma guy going to play uh, uh, Oklahoma, your home state, and uh, will you get a chance to take your teammates home or do anything like that? Um, I might have my mom bake some stuff for them, cook some stuff for them, but I don't know if uh, I can fit all, all however many guys in, in my parents' house. And, um, but you know, definitely try to. Try to do some things for the short time we're there. Um, you know, try to make everybody as comfortable as possible. Well, what would be the thing that you would bake? Uh, strawberry cake. So, I hope she's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> if like your your team went through obviously something no team's ever really quite gone through the past week with all the other stuff, can you talk about how proud you are of your team, your teammates, yourself overcoming this adversity? Uh, very proud, man. I, don't, I really don't know. Um, like you said, I there's not really a team that's gone through this. Um, and I remember Saturday morning when everything had hit, you could see certain guys, you know, certain guys that are really, um, that were really emotional about the situation. And, and this was the first day, and, and it got a lot bigger. At the point when we had the meeting, it was a, it was a, obviously a huge thing, but it, it just grew and grew and grew with each day or each hour, honestly. And it, it, it wore on guys, and, and we tried to do the thing where you know I was like, okay, let's put this off to the side, but that's impossible. Um, so the, the just the mental strength that we had, you know, to come back home, get one, um, and finish this one out tonight is, is unbelievable. I think you know a lot of credit goes to, to our coaching staff too for trying to lead the charge and, and, and get us through lock in mentally. <clears throat> like long series, long week, and then on top of that, you're deficit for a and a half quarter this night. So where did the energy come from to push the lead in the second half? I mean, if we didn't have energy in the second half, 